Hi guys, my name is Jim Woods and I'll be your host here for the next 15 minutes or so. But you know, if we're going to spend that much time together, I think we need to start out with a little bit of interaction. So, for the next five seconds, I want you to name as many brands as you can. Ready? Go! Stop! All right, how'd you do? I almost guarantee that every single person here named at least five brands. And how did you do that? Well, it's no miracle, it's not magic. It's actually the work of very experienced marketing teams who have done what we call branding and put their product's name in the front of your mind when you think of that product. So that's what I'm gonna talk about today, is branding. I'm gonna help you out with what is a brand and talk about why it's so important. Once we know what a brand is, we can talk about how to build a brand. And then if we wanna keep our brand around for a long time, we need to manage our brand as well. But don't worry, I'm not gonna let all this academia get in the way of our real conversation, which is what is the most important product that we are all gonna be branding in the very near future. But that's later, you gotta come back for that one. So let's start out with what a brand is. You've already told me, because I asked you to name as many as you could in five seconds. And I bet you came up with things like BMW, or Nike, or New Balance. Whatever the case, you came up with names, and a name can be a brand for a product. But what if you walk into a clothing store and you see a little swoosh on the front of a shirt? What company does that belong to? There's no name. That's right, it goes with Nike, and everybody knows that because that is how Nike has branded their items. Nike and the swoosh go together. So we've already expanded our definition from a brand being a name to being a name or a symbol. And finally, we can even throw in a design sometimes for what a brand is as well. So a brand is a name, a design, or a symbol that sets your definition of a product apart from your competitor's product. So, what makes this brand so stinking important? Well, once your product has a name, it can lead to what we call brand equity. Brand equity is a great way to measure how consumers think about your particular brand. And what it measures is, when a consumer hears your brand name, do they value it more than your competitor's version of that product. Well, if they do, you have established positive brand equity, and that's a good thing. But what if your consumer hears your product's name and thinks of it as less valuable than your competitor's product? Well, in that case, you've established, that's right, college student, you've established negative brand equity. But being a positive discussion, let's go back to the positive brand equity. Where can that lead us? Well, it goes straight down the golden road to what we're trying to do, and that is earn profit. In other words, brand equity, positive brand equity, can lead to increased value of your product. And in this case, value absolutely, and with no reservations, means monetary value. So, increasing positive brand equity can lead to an increase in brand value. Brand value doesn't have to be the store that it's sold in. It can be that name itself. That's what's the most valuable thing. So now that we know what a brand is and why it is valuable, let's talk about being able to build that effectively. Once we know what we want to make, we have to develop that product. It's tough coming out with a new product because you have to convince consumers that it's something they need and can use. But what if you've already got a well-established brand? Let's think about Gatorade, for example. Gatorade, the thirst quencher, came out in three flavors. The flavors were red, yellow, and blue. Not bad, did the job of quenching your thirst. However, once that brand, Gatorade, became established and well-known, Gatorade started extending their brand. And today, when you walk into any grocery store to find Gatorade, you've got to sift through shelves 
and shells of various flavors and styles of Gatorade. They're all the same thing. But once Gatorade knew that they had a market and an established brand that people trusted, they could try new flavors like purple or ice and add it to the store shelves with relative impunity because people trusted Gatorade. That's developing your brand. After you develop it, we need to name it. It's a lot easier than it sounds. Those of you with kids can probably attest to that because sometimes you never know what your kid's going to end up named. Well, if your product is your kid, you don't know what that may end up being named as well. One of my favorites is a company that calls its toys Whammo. What a perfect name. What five to 10 year old kid doesn't think that the word Whammo is the coolest thing on earth? And you've just named your company that. So these bite-sized consumers are looking at your product name and wanting it, desiring it, because it meets their needs for, for, for fulfillment in a toy. So you have to name your product. So be very considerate and put some thought into what you're going to name your product. The next step, after we've developed it and we've named it, we have to think about sponsoring our product. Now, sponsorship in this context means that who is going to use the name, or more specifically, whose name is going to be used on the final product? We have national sponsorship, which is a company that manufactures a product and then puts that name, their name, on every product nationwide, coast to coast. That's national product naming or sponsorship. In order for the manufacturer to move more products, sometimes they will sell it to a secondary wholesaler or maybe a reseller. Those people put the item on their shelf and they are allowed to rename that same product. National means the manufacturer uses their own name. Not national is when a seller buys it from the manufacturer and puts their own name on it. So, example of national, Chevrolet. Chevrolet manufactures vehicles, and there are Chevrolets sold coast to coast. Not national, maybe beer. That's how we end up with white cans with black labels that say beer on them in some stores. It's because they've been resold from the manufacturer. Cool. So now we've developed our product, we've named it, we know how we're going to sponsor it. It's time to position our product. Position doesn't mean where do we put it on the shelves or where do we put it in the store, although that's one connotation. But in this case, when we're talking about branding, positioning means how are we going to strategize in order to connect with our consumers. Our positioning strategy can take on three different tiers. The first tier is the lowest form of connection with our consumers, even though it's still connection. And we're going to talk about the attributes of our product. In other words, what one or two words describes our product? Short, fast, shiny, whatever that word is. It's an attribute of our product and it connects with the consumer, but on kind of a low level. Now, if we strategize to tier two, when it comes to positioning, we end up thinking about the benefits or showing off the benefits that our product gives to the consumers. Maybe it helps them get a better night's sleep. Maybe it saves them some time. Maybe it gets their clothes cleaner. Whatever the case, it's a benefit that our, it's a benefit that our consumer gets from using our product. That's the second tier. Now the third tier is really tough to get to, although a lot of companies really strive for it. The third tier is when you tap into the behavior and the values and the belief systems of your consumers. Now this is never ever easy because if you miss, you may miss in a big way. And you may alienate some people because what you think your product means as far as values may not be what your consumer finds that it means. However, it is the strongest way to connect with a consumer because you are tapping into their personal beliefs and their personal values. Now, I'll tell you a little secret because when I was a military training instructor with the Air Force, 
we used to have to mold young men and women to be airmen. And when we talked about beliefs and values, we always shared with each other, and especially the new guys, that in order to change someone's core beliefs or someone's core actions, you have to provide a significant emotional experience. And we did for those young men and women coming into the military. But when it comes to marking, it's a little bit different. Although we still have to provide a significant emotional experience for our product to be able to connect with our consumers on the level of their beliefs and their values. So that's the four things that we need to do to build our brands. And this is in a nutshell, don't forget. The first thing we have to do is to develop our product. Then we have to name it. Then we can decide our sponsorship strategy. And finally, we're going to position our product on one of the three tiers. Low engagement, medium engagement, or very high level of engagement. So, we've developed our product. Thank goodness we've gotten to this point. And now it's time to put it out there and let it be, right? Let's relax. No. Don't relax, because if you let it go, it's going to die off on its own. We have to manage our brand once it's out there. Now, the first way we need to manage our brand is to understand what our product or our brand means to the consumers. Once you understand what your product means to them and on what level it connects to them, then you can go back and evaluate and see how your product meets those needs of your consumer. Are you meeting the consumer's needs to the level that they expect? Do you understand what your product means? If you don't, we may have to go back to the drawing board just a little bit and reassess our marketing strategy. So that's it in a nutshell. We found out what a brand was and why it's so important. We talked about how to build a brand. And then we talked about how to manage a brand so that it succeeds and hangs around for as long as we would like it to. So now is the best part of all. I told you I had it for you. So there's going to come a time very shortly when we, as in Management 311 class, are going to have to develop a brand for a very, very important product. It's kind of secret, so do you want to know what it is? Yeah? All right. Well, come here. It's us. That's right. That's the big secret. You are going to have to develop yourself as a brand. The best time to do it is with a fresh degree hanging on the wall. So let me take a couple of minutes to step through exactly what I'm talking about. With you as a college graduate, you have already established the fact of what your brand is. I am a college graduate seeking employment. That's my brand. The next is why is it so important? Well, of course, you've got brand equity. Strive for positive brand equity in that when you fill out your resume, when you speak to employers or potential employers on the phone or in a face-to-face -face interview, make yourself more valuable when they think of your name as opposed to your competitors. Look how that fits. Well, there's more because if you can develop positive brand equity, then you can develop positive value in your brand. Remember, we're talking about cash in hand. So on the resume, when it says, what do you expect to get paid for this job? Don't be afraid to put it on there. Do your research, know who you're applying with, and know what people expect to get paid for that position, and then react accordingly. Let your positive brand equity build value in the brand that you are. So let's press, and we'll build our brand from there. We talk about developing the brand. It's a new brand and we need to make people want it. We know that there's jobs that can use our skill set. So seek out the employers, develop your brand in alignment with those jobs that you want to do the most. More importantly, the companies that you want to do the most. Well, the next step in building was naming it, but 
You're kind of stuck with that, aren't you? It's been many years since you were given an official name, and that's what you have. I will say that I've already got you beat there because I get to walk into an, into an interview and say, Hi, I'm James Woods. <laughs> wow, instant brand recognition, whether I like it or not. So I better make sure that my equity in my product is on par so I can build positive equity from that. The sponsorship is easy. That's us. We're going to sponsor it. We're the manufacturers. We are going to use that name all the time. And our brand is going to be who and what we stand for. Little co-sponsor action going on when Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University gives us a certificate of completion for a bachelor's degree. And that's going to add to our brand value. That's how that sponsorship works out well for us. Now you go into positioning. And this is very, very important because when we're filling out a resume, you can use the medium or the second tier of positioning, which is the benefits. List the benefits that you can give to a company on your resume. Don't be shy. It's a sad dog that doesn't wag its own tail. Let them know what you can do and how you'll benefit the company that you're applying for. Next is to get to the third tier where you make that emotional connection, but save that for when you're shaking hands face to face and you're speaking with the person who's thinking about hiring you. Get that emotional connection. Make a significant emotional experience in the meeting, the face to face meeting. That's when you do that. That's going to connect on that third tier, the most powerful, the most influential level of positioning your brand, which is you. Don't cry in the office. For goodness sake, don't cry, but make it emotional. Make them wonder how they ever lived without you. And then obviously you have to follow up with your brand and manage it, which means you need to know what you mean to that company and then make sure that you are meeting the expectations of that person who hired you. That even goes before they put your name on the paper. Follow up with phone calls, answer his questions, give them what they think they're hiring because it's you and it's your brand. You do that and you're going to knock it out of the park and I can't wait. I'm looking for success stories. I'm looking to hear how well we did with this. And I hope that the past 15 minutes gave you guys a little bit of information to go out there and knock them dead. Thanks. Take care.